My name is Jack Archer, and I'm a pilot of the Robotech Defense Force. I was born just before the global war. My parents died soon after the war began, so I had to learn how to survive on my own. Sometimes I wonder what kind of person I might have been if things were different. It's one of my darkest fears. If you took the war out of me, would there be anything left? The global war had been going on for a long time. All the experienced pilots were dead. My government was desperate, and the draftees started getting younger and younger. I needed a way to escape all that misery on the ground, so I didn't mind much when I got drafted. Flight training came easy to me. It was like I was meant to be a pilot. They said I had a rare talent, but somehow, I didn't see it that way. After a few years, the government dissolved. I became a mercenary, hiring out to any nation that could afford me. I didn't care, just so long as I stayed up in the clouds where I could forget about all the troubles down on Earth. The war ended in a single day. All it took was a miracle. A gigantic alien spaceship broke through hyperspace on a collision course with the Earth and crashed into a small island in the South Pacific called Macross Island. The leaders of the world's nations called a ceasefire and assembled the most brilliant minds of the time to examine the spaceship and assess the possible threat of alien invasion. The evidence they found pointed to a highly advanced civilization with technology far beyond what we had on Earth, something the scientists called robotechnology. But there was an even greater discovery. The scientists found a supply of protoculture aboard the ship, a new and nearly inexhaustible energy source used to power the alien machines. The spaceship was some kind of advanced warship bristling with powerful weaponry. They called it the Super Dimension Fortress, or the SDF-1 for short. They began rebuilding the ship as they unlocked the secrets of robotechnology. After the arrival of the SDF-1, work kind of dried up for a while. With the war over, no one wanted to hire mercenaries. The world was at peace for the first time I can remember and I was starting to get used to the idea. Those were happy times. I had been living in Macross City, helping to rebuild the SDF-1. I was just getting used to my new life when Roy Foker, the legendary Skull Leader himself, recognized me as I was getting off work. We had met a few times during the war. Sometimes I was on his side, and sometimes I flew against him. Over the years, we ended up forming a friendship. He told me he needed pilots to join a new military outfit called the Robotech Defense Force. Roy said they had some new kind of high-performance fighter that could beat anything I ever flew. They called it a Veritech. I made Roy prove it to me, fighter to fighter. Why did the military need a transforming fighter? It was well known that the aliens were warriors, but there was one detail that was kept from the public. In a top secret debriefing, we were informed that evidence from the crash indicated the aliens were 40 foot tall giants. The RDF developed the Veritech fighter to fight the aliens on their own terms. It would mean the difference between survival and extinction. 
After my training, I was stationed with the carrier Prometheus on Macross Island. On the day the final construction of the SDF-1 was completed, the entire city prepared to celebrate. That was when the Zentradi arrived. The SDF-1 belonged to them, and they were determined to take it back. We are under attack by alien invaders in Sector 412. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. All forces proceed in battle formation. Well, boys, you heard her. This is the real thing. Destroy all targets. We've got to cut them off before they reach Macross City. I'm on my way, Roy. Wolf Squadron, move to intercept invaders at Zone 428. Traffic's pretty heavy out here, so break formation, but try to keep each other covered.
back to the Prometheus. I've got some business to take care of in town. SDF-1 Control to Wolf Squadron. As soon as you are refueled and rearmed, proceed to Macross City to defend assigned sectors. Control to Wolf 10, an alien assault force is approaching from the west. Head into zone 209 and secure the area. Check your heads up displays and follow the arrow. I'm on my way. Remember, Macross City wasn't made to accommodate anything the size of a Veritex, so you're going to run out of room pretty fast. You new pilots should stick to battleoid mode until you develop your skills.
The SDF-1 was able to escape the Zentradi attacks by executing a spacefold maneuver, which took most of the island along with it. I nearly got killed when that happened, and was in the hospital for months before I could fly again. After recovering from my injuries, they stationed me at Alaska base. All my friends from the academy were on board the SDF-1, and I wondered if I'd ever see them again. The SDF-1 didn't get a very warm reception when they returned. The United Earth government flatly refused to help them. They had survived for a year out in space under constant attack by the Zentradi, only to be told that they weren't wanted back on Earth. Chiron, who was maybe the worst of the Zentradi warlords, continued to launch attacks on the SDF-1 after it returned home. When I heard that Roy Folker had been killed, I visited the SDF-1 to attend his funeral. That's when Chiron chose to attack. Captain Glowval decided to test out a new barrier system they had developed, which enclosed the SDF-1 in a protective energy shield. It even worked, for a while anyway.
immediately. The barrier system is about to chain react. You've got to get away from here quick. Our worst fears were realized when an armada of Zentradi ships started folding into orbit around the Earth. When they had all arrived, millions of warships encircled our small planet. When the ships were in position, Dolza, supreme commander of the Zentradi, gave the orders to open fire and bombard the planet Earth. It was total devastation on a scale even humans had never seen before. In seconds, everything I cared about was gone. If the SDF-1 had never arrived on Earth, billions of lives might have been saved. You might say that the battle was lost before it really began, but still, we fought on. This is Alaska Base. Squadrons, prepare for battle. Wolf Squadron, see if you can keep those fighters occupied. You've got to keep them off the SDF-1 until the final attack. I don't believe it. How are we supposed to win against a force of this size? There must be millions of ships out there.
Not bad, my Hermione. I'll see you again when your skills have improved.